Okay, so bear with me for just a second because I want to tell you about this idea that I had like six months ago. Actually, it was less of an idea and more of an invitation to a really, really cool big adventure. You see, in the midst of the blistering heat of summer, I got an email telling me that GearFest was happening and that I somehow was getting invited. Now, what is GearFest? You see, GearFest is an event that happens every year where Sweetwater invites all of the big guitar brands to kind of show off their new stuff. So I'm talking Fender, Gibson, Yamaha, Subway. Okay, well, Subway wasn't there, but I think they 100% should be invited next time. Anyway, I thought it would be a fun idea to road trip there and finally meet up with some of my buddies. I mean, in my mind, I talk about them all the time. They're a supporter of the channel, so why not go and just see what's up? Can I just get a meatball sub, please? I mean, even if the trip goes terribly, worst comes to worst, I get to hang out with my friends and I still get a meatball sub. Essentially, I knew this would be low risk, high reward, so. I packed up my car and I left. And so naturally I get on the road and start making my way towards Fort Wayne, Indiana. And as you could probably guess, my expectations were pretty much set. I'm gonna try and play as many different guitars as possible. I'm gonna try and hang out with as many of my friends as possible. I'm going to try and cram so much into these 72 hours. To put it as simply as possible, I was a man with a plan and not a lot of time to get everything done. So I'm ready to do all of this. To get all of this done, I step out of my car, I walk into those insane double doors and immediately something Thing goes instantly wrong because of course it does well not really wrong more of really right you see one of my friends comes up to me and he says hey bro I got actually a secret thing I want to show you and of course I'm always in for secrets no matter what they are so I'm like what you got? So what he does is he takes me into this back room where there are a couple of people waiting. And in this room, there's 5,000 different guitars. I'm telling you, there are tellies, right? And there are strats and there are PRSs. And trust me, these are not the budget versions that I've usually played. These are the custom shops. These are the big kahunas. And I'm thinking to myself, which one do I get to play first? But he says, before you pick up anything, there's one last thing I wanna show you. And he brings me over to this guitar and it looks like, the only way I could describe it is as if PRS made a telly, which doesn't make sense because Paul Reed Smith has never really designed like a telly. That doesn't make sense. Or does it? You see, what I and basically the entire world didn't know yet was that within 24 hours, PRS would be releasing both the NF53 and the Miles Kennedy Signature, which was basically Paul's take on the Telecaster. And my friend was like, since you got here a little bit early, I'm gonna give you a day to just check it out, to just use it, to just play with it. PRS is on board with this. And I thought to myself, I was already trying to cram a million things in here. I'm not gonna have this guitar at home to play with it. I need to do this now if I'm gonna be able to like make a video about it before I get home because I genuinely wanna see what I think about this thing. I mean, how often will I ever get the chance to make an immediate initial reaction to something that not only I have never heard of, but the world has never actually seen. So of course I immediately tell my friend, thank you so much for this opportunity. And I tell PRS, I think I'm gonna be using this guitar for the next 24 to 48 hours. I'm running around Sweetwater with it, I'm trying to hang out with my friends. I'm trying to do everything in one period of time. And genuinely, it's some of the most fun I've ever had, but it's also really exhausting. Now, eventually, of course, I finish making my video. And just like that, the three days comes to an end. And I had the most fun I've had in a long time, but also I'm literally exhausted. Like I was just saying, I spent the entire weekend just running around with different friends, trying to film different videos, trying to do everything and anything that I could. I had somehow found a way to check every single thing off of my list. And now the only thing I wanted to do in this world was to get in my car, go home, take off my socks and take a nap because those people who sleep with their socks on, they're crazy. But you see, I knew that before I could get back to my beautiful couch and take the nap of a lifetime, there was just one more thing I had to do before leaving Fort Wayne. What you gotta know is that while I was there, I was so busy meeting up with friends and trying to meet up with different people to do different things that I had failed to recognize that I was basically in the biggest music store in the world. I was like a kid in a candy shop and what kid walks by a candy candy shop for 72 hours and never has the guts to go in there and at least take a look. This is where things got a little weird, but I knew I was gonna have the most fun. You see, most people when they walk into the biggest guitar store basically in the world would say to themselves, what's the most expensive vintage amp that I can get? Set me up with a four by 12 Marshall cab so I can crank the speakers, but I was in a different sort of mood that day. I don't know if it was because of who I am or because I was just exhausted. There was just 
one thing that I wanted to see. And that thing, for some reason, was amp sims. You see, I wanted to look into the future. I guess for some reason, the NF53 had my brain in the mindset of what's next. So I was like, do they have a Helix 2 in here? Do they have a Headrush 2 that I don't know about? So I'm looking on their entire wall of pedals, of which they have hundreds, and I find the amp sim section. They have all the normal ones that I'm used to, an ACS1, a Strymon, a Radium. But in the corner of my eye, I see something, and it's this silver pedal with with a black outlining and it just for a second it really intrigues me i think possibly for a second i had seen it online but this might be my only chance to actually play one so i pick it up and i start just playing with it and i realized i had seen a couple of people talk about it online but i need to plug it in before this place closes and try it for myself and as i turn up the volume and start to play this thing as quickly as i can so i can kind of just start getting on the road i notice that i instantly fall in love with the tones in the moment i felt like there weren't really many amp modelers that i had played that sounded this good and i didn't think i would walk away with anything i didn't think i was actually going to buy anything while i was there but right before i got in my car i paid for it and i brought it home and as soon as i took it home i started to actually use it on a couple videos and the weird thing is that usually when I have a piece of gear that I use in a lot of videos or that I start to use on a regular basis, I tell a lot of people about it. I talk about it in the videos or I tell my friends about it, but this one I kind of kept to myself. It wasn't because I didn't like it. I just never really had the inclination to talk about it for some reason. It was like it was my little secret. I mean, it's not really a secret. Anyone can go out and buy it and I'm sure thousands of people know about it, but I started using it to get a lot of my guitar tones. Now, disclaimer, obviously if I was doing a video on the Dream 65, I would use a Dream 65. Or if I was doing a video on Tone X, I would use a Tone X. But this sort of became something that I never actually told anyone. So this right here is my Two Notes Revolt. And it's kind of a very interesting piece of gear. Unlike a lot of modelers that come out nowadays, this one actually happens to be all analog. I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a tube right there. It's a 12AX7 tube, and just for fun, it lights up. What you gotta know is that I'm not here to just unwarrantedly gas this thing up for the next 20 minutes or so. I don't even think I have 20 minutes until my next subway appointment. But there are a couple of things that when I got this, I was really intrigued by, but now I have a couple of different thoughts. And with this being all analog, I thought for a second that this was the cure, right? Because in the guitar world nowadays, the big battle is analog versus digital. All of the analog guys seem to say that digital will never sound as good as analog analog and all of the digital guys are like you couldn't tell in 99.5% of scenarios so since most of the amp sims that you see people using on a regular basis end up being digital I thought it could be a really cool cross maybe it could be the thing this analog amp sim because there are a couple of them out there that could win people over but that's where I noticed I was a little bit wrong a lot of people that I had been talking to who prefer analog systems over digital it wasn't just necessarily about the quality of the tone it was actually about the feel of what was coming out and being able to feel the air move out of an actual amp and me being in this bedroom only really playing amps on certain periods of time so my neighbors don't get completely mad at me that's something that I don't often get. I'm very much used to playing amps straight through my interface. And I think that's one of the things that really drew me to this that for amps that come out of your interface I really really like the tone. Now the second thing that I found really interesting about this was the actual amp models on there. Here's the deal. 99% of amp modelers, you're getting something pretty similar. You're probably getting three different amp models, a Fender, a Vox, and some sort of Marshall Plexi, which makes sense because those are basically the three most famous amps of all time. But with this, it's a little bit different. You still get three different amp models. First one is a Fender. Then instead of a Vox, you go straight to Plexi. And then you get a Soldan. draw 
toss someone to a two notes revolt as opposed to some of the other really big amp sim modelers that people go for nowadays is just general simplicity. So for example, this thing has one universal boost as opposed to something like the UAFX pedals, which usually has three different boosts and three different speakers, but only comes with one amp. So it's kind of pick your poison. I think for a lot of people, especially people who this is their first time using an amp sim and might want, want to have the learning curve that they have with a lot of pedals out there, even if you might be able to get a better sound, one boost might be all you need. Feel that this, the Two Notes Revolt, is one of the coolest and easiest gateways into the world of amp modeling and amp sim. It is not perfect by any means, but I do feel that it is one of the easiest, no frills, and great sounding amp modelers out there. And I feel like in a world where we have Tone X's and we have UAFX pedals, like things like this that are just straight up all analog get overlooked because of what everything can do. And I think that comes down to like what we're used to with helixes and what we're used to with all these all-in-ones but i don't think everyone is necessarily looking to go straight into the biggest thing with that i don't use this every single day but every single time i've used it it's been really reliable and specifically with the fender basement sound which is a sound that i know most about in terms of amps just because that's the style i play a lot of cleans and a lot of very low overdriven tones it's worked perfectly both as a pedal platform and as an all-in-one in this room when I can just put the reverb through Logic. And as with most pieces of gear that I have in this room, I've learned over and over again to really appreciate when I have a story that goes along with a piece of gear that I love and that I want to share with my friends and that I can use on the road or in recordings or whatever. But I mean, overall, as always, it doesn't matter at all what I think. What matters is what you think. Have you tried the Two Notes Revolt? Have you tried any other analog amp sims? Let me know in the comments. Please let me know because I'm very interested in the world of analog amp sims. I think that we don't talk about them enough as how they bridge the gateway between the analog guys and the digital guy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. It was so much fun to finally be able to talk about something like this that I've had for six or seven months that I've never taken the time to address or really talk about yet. If you want to know anything more about the Two Notes Revolt or any of the other gear that I used in this video, it's linked down below. Make sure to check it out. It's one of the best ways to support the channel if that's something you want to do, or if you're just curious about any of the other gear that I use in this video, make sure to check out those links. Thank you to all my patrons. Backing tracks like the one you just heard are available on Patreon if you want to check it out. Like and subscribe if you had a good time. And most importantly, like most important of all, have a fantastic day.